Now, where do you stand on the idea if James Harden wanted to be back in Houston? Because the green's not always, or the grass is not always greener. Right now in Brooklyn, that grass isn't always greener than it was back in, whenever he was going to Western Conference Finals and coming short of going to the NBA Finals here in Houston. Where do you stand on the idea if James Harden wanted back in Houston? Would you be willing to listen? So we covered all this yesterday in detail, and I believe that it was intentionally done because Paul was tipped off by Brendan that, uh, what do we call it, um, fired up Joel is the best Joel to have. Uh-huh. And I, I kind of went nuts on the fact that what was more <laughs> – Puzzling and mesmerizing to me was any Houston fan of either team wanting Deshaun or James to play for their team. And we talk about parallels, but in, in, in particular as it relates to Harden. And I said, even if I didn't know all the stuff that I know that a lot of people don't, when you have a guy that you've given everything to for almost a decade, and the minute that it isn't going his way with a chance to win a title, he bails on you. You never want to see that guy again. And when he realizes, like the scorned girlfriend, that once he left, he had it pretty damn good where he had it, but now he's with somebody else, but he wants to come back, I'm like, miss me, okay? Because you had your shot and you blew it. I- I'm not doing that again. So to me, it, it just it was infuriating to think of any – and there were, and believe me, Twitter was loaded with, hey, we could take Harden back. And I'm like – and the other thing you don't want is – the guy that's going to come in and say it's still all about me, it's still my franchise, when Tad and Daryl are gone, it's not still your franchise like it was, and you're going to stunt the growth and affect the 19-year-olds that are trying to make a name for themselves and get touches and get experience and do all the things to come to try and be one of the guys. I don't think that the Harden-Watson comparison is a very good one because Deshaun Watson's still on the team. But and he you're also still gonna... said he wanted out. That's where I'm going. Sure, but you're going to get a return for Deshaun Watson. You're going to get your three you first-round draft picks. Right, but now you're looking at it from a different situation. Like, if Harden comes back, it's probably going to be like a free agent. Mm-hmm. You're not giving up assets. No. So it's two different things. You're not giving up assets for James Harden, whereas if you trade Deshaun Watson, you're bringing back assets that you hope spark the rebuild of this organization going forward. Now... Would you agree that you'd be a better basketball team with James Harden, yes or no? Well, we just talked about one guy on an NBA roster can make a difference to make you a playoff team. I think you could be, yes. I would be willing to bring James Harden back to Houston, but there are some conditions that need to be applied. And I'm I'm anti-James Harden. I think I've made that very clear well, let throughout, me be adamant. throughout even the though history I agree of the show. You, even if I told you one guy can make the difference, yep. I still say absolutely, unequivocally, no. Even if it means that you're back into the playoffs. And it doesn't matter. This team, team isn't about getting, getting back to the playoffs. They got to get back on a regular, consistent basis, which means building up their roster again. You don't think – now, James Harden's history here. Let me let me tell you my conditions Got first because the conditions to me are, are, are basically the deal breaker if he's not willing to accept this. One of them is he apologizes for his behavior as a Rocket, the way that he left, how he was a jerk to every everyone, how everything was on his time, Harden, Harden, Harden. Like, he has to be willing to accept the fact and apologize for his past that it's no longer going to be that way. It's no longer my team and my organization, and we're not doing things on James Harden's time. Okay, I was going to wait for you to finish that's one before condition. I crapped all over it. Well, do you want to go condition by well, condition? Well, because that's a deal breaker right now. Then you just tip your cap and say, James, good luck wherever you end up because it ain't going to be here because James's ego won't let him do any of that. The second part of it is that he accepts that while he's still going to be the best player on the Rockets – He's not the franchise player in this organization going forward. That he's willing, he has to be willing to not stunt the development of Jalen Green. And, in fact, you know, if, if Harden was committed to that, he could help Jalen Green's development because he is a willing passer. He's somebody whose game, I wouldn't say, is quite similar, but he could teach him how to be that star. Now, again, you're talking about a completely different demeanor from a James Harden. Hey, guys, I want to tell you real quick about Fitz Roofing. I love the people at Fitz Roofing because they take care of Houstonians every step of the way. It starts with a free no-obligation inspection. All you do is call them, 832-521-3001. No matter what you need done, they come to you, tell you what they can do. They go back up the rest of their day. You want them to come back, you book them, and they do great customer service before, during, and after the sale that you can check out all the ways that they can help you at fitzroofing.com but believe me fitz roofing making a difference one home at a time if the first one didn't get you then the second <laughs> one will because here's the other thing he's not in the business of of relinquishing anything unless your name's kevin durant and even still you know he's not doing it for Kyrie; he's doing it for kd but he wouldn't do it for jalen green and the other thing is the one thing that he believes his legacy needs is winning a title and so he's not going to relinquish relinquish anything to Jalen Green when he still feels like the only thing he has yet to accomplish is a championship. I don't think that he cares about the title. Oh, I really do. Why would he leave Brooklyn then? Because Joel Embiid, because it's in so much turmoil and he's so frustrated by what Kyrie's pulling 
and the fact that that you know he's getting criticized and he wants to say it's because of injuries and otherwise. Right. And so he doesn't like like I told you, he doesn't like to take hits from the media. He doesn't like to be put on the spot when you're the A the A team uh, having to answer questions and perform at the highest level at all times. He hates that kind of part of the deal. So that this that's part of the main reason why he wants out of Brooklyn. If he could get to Joel Embiid in Philly and know that Daryl and Tad are doing calisthenics right now to bend over backwards for him again, then he's going to be in that situation. I'm not so sure that that's a better chance for him to win a title, though. Like, being with Embiid versus being with a Durant when he gets back healthy, the Kyrie Irving that's, stuff is eventually going to go away at it? some point. Yeah, it should. If I'm the Nets, I would already have traded him. I would have traded him to get possibly two resources that could make you better. You're talking about Kyrie. Yeah, because I just, I'm not sure that's going to get better. And even if this one gets resolved, the next one's coming around the corner. His whole career has been nothing but these kind of situations that have nothing to do with basketball. And so I wouldn't be convinced. And even though he convinced James and KD that he was all in, he certainly wasn't. He said the same thing in Boston, and he certainly wasn't. And he pulls these antics. I'd be like, you know what, bro? getting later in my career and a title really means something to me you keep doing this i'm not winning one i'm out well Kyrie has more titles than joel Embiid, and durant has more titles than joel Embiid right, but there's too. a hunger for joel Embiid than to say i want to get one sure but i look at the two situations and if i if I, I look at harden durant Kyrie is having a better chance to win a championship than harden and Embiid. I don't disagree with you, Jeremy, if there weren't any outside distractions and, and the otherwise. And the otherwise, it's like Deshaun and the off-the-field stuff. If he didn't have the off-the-field stuff, there's no doubt in my mind he's a top-10 quarterback and better, and he's got all these different things. From a Kyrie perspective, I don't see how you can't evaluate the overall picture and include all the off-the-floor stuff with Kyrie. And the, the off-the-floor stuff is, is you're talking about one specific thing that he doesn't no, have the vaccination. he wanted to stay in Boston. He said he was here for the rest of his career. He did a Nike commercial about it. And then you know what he did? He bailed on him. And then he said it wasn't for him. And he didn't like the way he was treated. And, and then he's doing incense and all this stuff to try and you know clear the demons when he went back to Boston. And then the earth was flat. And then it was the vaccine. <laughs> and it, what's going to be next? Well, why does the earth is flat? Why does his opinion on the earth being flat have anything to do because with Because it became a distraction. And it became a big deal that they wouldn't let go. He didn't want to let it go. Do you think that was a distraction? He continues to create these off-the-field drama moments for the media and otherwise. And I think it would be fine if he was playing every game. But he's not. And KD's not getting any younger. And the fact that he knows in the Philly situation, they're going to give him everything he wants, and he's going to be the A guy again, which as much as he he wanted to get to a winning situation to win a title and he was willing, and I think it was better suited for him to be a B or a C guy, yeah. he also realizes all those extra perks and things when they just completely got down on their knees every day for him disappear too when you're not the A guy. And he wants to be the A guy again. Now, he might be 1A, 1B with Embiid, but because it's Daryl and Tad, they would elevate him. See, I think that's what James Harden really covets. He covets the the star power. He covers the the stardom, the money, the fame. Like winning's a good idea. Like he doesn't want to be on a losing team. That's why he forced his way out of the Rockets. But I think Harden was always fine getting to the Western Conference semifinals, the Western Conference Finals. I to me, like it's the reason that he dated a Kardashian. It's the reason that he you know looked at all the fame more than winning. I always thought that Harden valued the fame and the the star power. Far he, more than the winning championships. Here's the thing, Jeremy. And again, I was too close to it for too long, too. But the one thing that really aggravated him the most was that he didn't get even more accolades for what he did when he was a rocket with the scoring and the innovation and the way he did the step backs and the things, the the the, the Euro steps and the things that, you know, kind of beat the system. And, and, and he wants more of the Barkley love of he's the greatest offensive player I've ever seen type quotes, which I couldn't believe Charles said. But the one thing that he knew would validate everything in his favor was would be to get a title because Charles doesn't have one, because Ewing doesn't have one, Malone and Stockton don't have them. So he could do what those others couldn't, and he knows then it would be unequivocally, you can't argue it anymore, he's a Hall of Famer. He's worried about all the individual things, like getting to the Hall of Fame, but he knows it's easier if he's got a title in his back pocket. Look at a starting five of a James Harden, Jalen Green, Kevin Porter Jr., Shingoon, Christian Wood. That's a playoff team. Playoff basketballs. You don't think that's a playoff team? I, 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 look, Again, much like we criticize others team? around the city when they decide that there's a chance that this, the Texans could be a playoff team next year or that they would take Davis Mills over one of the top five quarterbacks in the draft last year or any quarterback in the first round this year, it's the same kind of thing. Like, miss me with this whole, that lineup's a playoff team. You don't Maybe think it's a playoff team? Not this year. Hell no. You no don't think way. that Harden, Jalen Green, Kevin Porter Jr. Should, I'm talking, well, we're talking about next season because Harden wouldn't be coming here this year. Wood and Shingoon, that's not a playoff team to you? Nope. Man. Nope. 
No, that's not even close. That's not, not even close. Not in the West. Not not with every team that's in the West. And the fact that those other guys aren't ready for prime time yet. Look at how many mistakes. Turnovers. Well, that's, why, that's why you're bringing in a hard. Harden be the one ready but for he prime does, time. I, I, need I remind you when he was he's here? He's a willing passer. No, he's not. He racks up assists. Exactly where you know exactly where I'm going. Every time he'd pass you the ball, if you missed a shot, you weren't going to see it again if you were butt naked, wide open. He he doesn't trust his teammates. He's not going to trust younger players. He's not. He's going to bark at them and bitch at them every time they make a mistake. And that's not a playoff team. Four six eight three saying this is the dumbest question. No, I don't want him. I want this team to build a championship, and Harden can't win one. Uh, hell no. DW and Harden can kiss his you know what. 713-780 ESPN. I'm, I'm a little surprised that most of the the people that are uh, that are texting in are, are anti James Harden. Because you remember whenever the Why whenever, wouldn't you be? He crapped on you. Well, you had the the mutual parting of ways. The the way that the, the Rockets traded him was in order to benefit him. That way they could look good amongst players around the NBA. It's a big reason why they traded him to the Nets, and they were willing to cater to James Harden even when they were trading him. And Tillman Fertitta asked James Harden where he wanted to go to. Uh, thank goodness he said Brooklyn, if you believe that that was the best trade package that was out there. Which he's still a very good basketball player. I mean, he's still one of the I, top, look, what, 10, 15 players in I'm the NBA. I'm not saying he's team. not a good basketball player. The other thing that you should be concerned about, as much as he's adapted to fit the Nets and his assists have gone way up, his scoring, his ability to score, the shape you have to be in to score on a nightly basis like he was with Houston, that's all seemingly gone now. He's yeah, a different type player. He couldn't carry the load the way he did the last time here. I don't believe you're a champion at all with James Harden. Not even close. Like You might be cracking the playoffs. I believe that James Harden, I said this when James Harden was in his prime, that James Harden's never going to be the best player on a championship team. I've said it too. But it is a it is a winner, right? I mean, it's in, I say winner. Like you're going to win more games if you were to do that. You were going to win more games if you had Deshaun Watson. So it's kind of interesting. Like the opinion just right now that Deshaun Watson and Harden can kiss my you know what. Saying that means that you're not going to win games in the short term, though. Like but I think both that of those guys are good. But I think the city of Houston has finally come to grips with that. They're not getting brainwashed every day by both teams having press conferences telling you we're a championship caliber team. We're a championship caliber organization. Our, we're, our goals are still to win titles and get to the playoffs when realistically your rosters aren't. And the people and the personnel that you're putting in place to make decisions aren't. So you can't and, – and eventually one day they wake up, get out of bed, and it's you know, the anvil smacks them in the head from Wiley e. Coyote, and they go, oh, wait a minute, we're rebuilding now. So that, that now at least from a Houston perspective, they've come to grips with – it's not about winning for a year or two. It's about getting back to where you were from the Rockets, eight straight appearances with Harden to at least make the playoffs and go deeper. From a Texans perspective, winning your division or getting in and winning at least one playoff game and doing things. It's the longer run, not the short term. And that's going to take a long time.